Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Um, today we're going to take care of some biter bases towards the end. Um, but first what I'd like to do is get flamethrower ammo set up. So, um, in the meantime, I've... Excuse me. Perfect timing. Um, in the meantime, I've added a, a chest here to pick up bricks because from time to time I'm going to want extra stone bricks um, to lay down paths and things like that so this way we'll accumulate some extras and what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm putting it in a chest and then from the chest into the assembler so what that does is it makes sure that first and foremost I'm providing I'm making all the stone brick available to this assembler but um, in the event that I have more stone brick coming in that I need to keep this thing running, then it'll accumulate in the chest. Uh, right now, however, there is none accumulating in the chest. And uh, that appears to be simply because I don't have enough stone coming in. So if I had a bigger stone patch with more mining drills, then I would be making more stone brick. But for now, we're using it as fast as it comes in. And then up here, uh, I'm starting to collect some red ammunition, which is fantastic. I'm going to start taking some of the yellow and just uh, control left click so I can start to use some of that uh, for the military science. Um, and as a matter of fact, let's do this. Oops. Ah, yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Oh, no. Yeah, that is a problem. All right, let me move this up by one. There we go. And then <clears throat> I could put another pole there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple wooden chests. I'll put one there, I'll put one there. Some yellow inserters. And then I'll put some of the yellow ammo in there. That way we can start to recycle some of it. All right, because we made a lot. We've got some extra for sure. Okay. So um, the reason I want the flamethrower is because it'll make it it'll make it easier to take out these bases if I have a flamethrower available. Um, so I've already actually crafted the flamethrower. Uh, the research for it has finished. In fact, we're finishing up the last of the researches that we had queued up here. Um, so let's go ahead and queue up some more research. Uh, I'm gonna put these three different module types in there, portable solar panels. Uh, let's see, refined flammables will give me more damage on the flames. That'll come in handy. And, well, let's go ahead and research cliff explosives. I don't have cliffs. So I don't really need it, but I do want to complete all of the research just for the sake of completion. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I've already made the flamethrower, but we need ammunition for it. So flamethrower ammo. And the reason this is black or this is red here in, in my crafting menu is because you can't craft it by hand. So, Anything that's red in the menu has to be made in a machine or a furnace, right? Like the engines. So the flamethrower ammo requires steel plate and crude oil. Now the crude oil is, here's some up here. That's the oil that we get directly out of the ground. Um, it doesn't need any sort of processing once we get it done. Um, Cool, got more shotgun ammo too. So I got a full stack of that. Um, 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to put some pump jacks up there so that we can get it out of the ground. And then I'm going to pump it down around here. Um, I've laid out some stone path. Up here is where I plan to put my oil refinery. And the oil refinery is where we will process the oil into petroleum and other stuff. Um, but for now, I just want to get it out of the ground. Okay, so uh, we'll need to get power up there because the pump jacks require electricity. So all I'm going to do is just start running. Ah, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's, um, let's make big electric poles. So I'll just start handcrafting those. Um, big electric poles are good for getting electricity from one place to another. Um, as you can see, they don't cover a lot of area, right? They only cover the, the space immediately around the pole and they take up a lot of space. But as you'll see, um, you can span fairly large distances with them. Actually, let's do this. Yeah, put that one right there. Okay, we'll put another one there. So I'm just clicking and dragging, and I'm gonna click and drag along my path here up until I get close to where that oil is, which I can see on my mini map. Okay, and then from here, I'll go in the other direction. I'm trying to keep it lined up just because I like I like to try to keep my electrical grid in straight lines. All right, let's take some of those out. Now I have done two levels of the uh, explosives damage research, and that's all that it—that's all that you need to get to where you can one-shot trees with your grenades. You just need the first two levels. I wasn't sure before if it was two or three, but it is two. Okay, that's about as far as we'll go. Uh, where are those grenades? Okay, so you'll see we have uh, crude oil here on the ground. Uh, these little oil, oil spots on the ground are where the oil is. And uh, I think I counted eight. You can kind of count how many spots there are on the map. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's two there, seven, eight. All right, so to extract it, I've got eight pump jacks, which I've made previously. And this shows where you can place them. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna set these up and I'm just gonna kind of point them all towards a central point, And I'm gonna collect them into fluid tanks. Yeah, I'll have that one go out. I'll have this one go up. All right. So now I'm going to take some of my pipe. I should have brought more. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's put the tanks. And I'm going to put four storage tanks. So I'm going to go from the pump jacks into the tanks. And then from the tanks down to our base. I'm just going to start handcrafting some more straight, sec straight sections of pipe. Okay, and then all I want to do is between, between my undergrounds and my straight pipes is just get these all connected to my tanks. And my phone is ringing off the hook for some reason. Not that we have hooks anymore. Actually, will that reach all the way? Yeah. Okay, so now all these pump jacks are 
going to be going into the tanks as soon as I put some power to them. There we go. Okay, now we should also make a radar so that we can see what's going on up here. So I'll put a radar and then we're going to need some defenses here too, because this will be vulnerable, vulnerable to attack. Um, and I didn't bring any of my wall with me. So we're going to, we're going to come back to set up defenses there. Um, now the other thing I've done is I've crafted some engine units. All right, so actually for now, I'll just, uh, I'll just put in a couple of turrets. Okay, and we'll come back and, and do more, uh, more complete defenses here. Um, so I've got some engine units here and I crafted those so that I can make pumps. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna make one pump and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that on the output or on this tank pointing out. So, so this will, this will pull the oil from the tanks and onto my pipeline where I'll take it down to the oil processing area. Okay. So I'm just going to use this underground pipe. Is that in the right place? Nope. There we go. And I'm just going to drag this all the way down. Uh, let's see here. Okay. That's where I want my path to go. Let's take out those trees. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring the pipe down along this path and we'll do it right here next to the power poles. Okay. Uh, where's my car? So I'm going to take the car. I'm going to point it south, put some fuel in it. I'm going to hop in and I'm going to show you how we can do this rather quickly. Okay, so I'm going to click, click, and then I'm just going to start driving forward. There. And now we've got pipe coming all the way down here. All right, so let's go back down to the base and let's get some... Let's get some more pipe and let's grab some walls. Pipe I'm still making over here. I'll go ahead and grab all of it. Um, and some iron plate. And all the undergrounds I've, I've just been handcrafting. Because once you have once you have a lot of pipe and iron plate, you just right click a few times and you can make lots of underground pipes. Underground pipes take a long time to make by hand. Okay, so let's uh, get some more ammo. Okay, I don't need that much wall right now, I don't think. That should be enough. And I'm gonna start to handcraft as well a flamethrower turret. Those take five engines each, so I can only make one, but um, those are gonna be a good addition to the, to the defenses up there. Flamethrower turrets are awesome. Ah, I should have got more brick too, but I don't really have any extra, so that's fine. We'll finish the path later. Let's throw in a light so we can see what's going on. There we go. One there. Okay. And throw a couple lights up here. Now we're not going to need to come up here very often. Um, 
but we've got the radar here and we've got some lights. So wherever we happen to be, we'll be able to come up here and take a look and see what's going on. Okay. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Let's do night vision. We'll do belt immunity equipment. Uh, this is something you can put in your power armor and it prevents you from shifting around when you step on a belt. So, you know, for a lot of this stuff, we need red circuits and things like that. So we won't be able to actually build any of that stuff yet, but we'll get it researched. Energy shields are nice to have. And then let's do the next level of ammunition upgrades and flame upgrades. Okay. So now I'm going to wall this in. Now I'm, I'm, I'm walling in up here. You know, I haven't walled in yet in the main part of the base, but that's because it's still expanding, right? But this little oil outpost here is never going to get any bigger than it is right now. So, um, so I don't mind walling it in right now. Okay. And the purpose of the wall, um, you know, the biters will destroy walls. They're not, uh, they're not indestructible. But the point of it is just to slow the biters down so that we can destroy them with other means. Okay, and then if you wanted, we could make, uh, let's make two gates, All right? And you can put a couple gates there so that way we can go in and out of the wall easily. Okay, and now that we have the wall, we need to place turrets around the perimeter. And I generally like to set the turrets a couple of tiles back from the wall itself um, because some of the biters can some of the biters can reach over the walls with their attacks. So it helps to leave a little bit of space. Let's move this over by one tile. Okay, now I don't have a lot of ammunition to go around, so I'll start by putting 100, and then I'll take half of it out. I'll take some more out of that one. That's 100. Okay, so that should last us for a while. Um, now, because of where we're located, oh, see, we were just getting attacked down here. Because of where we were located, I would expect most of the attacks to come from the north. Okay, so I'm going to take my single flamethrower turret, um, and you can see the area that it covers. It's somewhat it's somewhat limited in how much, uh, how much area you can cover. Um, but these things just absolutely, absolutely decimate the biters. Okay. So I'll just put it, I'll put it right there. And all we have to do to feed it is to give it a supply of oil. Okay. It doesn't require power. It only requires oil and we've got plenty of oil right here. So when the biters come in, this will start shooting flames and uh, the biters will burn. And as they're burning, the turrets will finish the job. So this should be, this should be quite safe for a while. We just have to check on it once in a while to make sure that we're not running out of ammunition. All right, so let's go back down and let's start making some flamethrower ammunition. Okay, and we can do that over here. I'll just go ahead and pick up my car now. All right, let's take out these trees, being careful not to destroy my pipeline. There we go. All right, and I'll pick that up. And over here is where we'll start doing our oil processing. Um, but until then, we can put a machine. Now let's not do it there. 
because what I'm going to need to do is run my oil down that way. So I'll put a machine. Uh, I'll put it right. I'll put it right here for now. Okay. And let's move that closer. There we go. So this is going to be making, uh, ah, okay. I need a chemical plant. Let's make a chemical plant. It's a different type of production machine that has, uh, as you can see that by the blue arrows, it has inputs and outputs for liquids. Okay. Flamethrower ammunition. There we go. All right. So you can see that both of those inputs will take oil. You only need to, you only need to feed it into one of the inputs for it to work. Okay. So let's get some power brought over and I'll throw in a light and then the other input is going to be steel. So five steel will make one flamethrower ammo. So let's make a couple small boxes. Uh, get some yellow inserters. Yeah, crafting time is six seconds each. And I'll just throw in a bunch of steel there. And you can see it producing. You can see it kicking out smoke. Um, that's new. That's smoke animation. Wow. Actually, all the animation on this machine is really nice. Let's turn the alt off so we can see it better. That looks really cool. That's all new with version 17, I believe. Okay, so I've got a few. So what I'm gonna do is tab over to my flamethrower, press C, and you get some flames. All right, you can use those to burn trees. Um, some trees it will completely destroy and others will only burn down to like a black stump. Uh, but the fire will spread. So if you have, as you can see there, if you have trees that are fairly close together, you know, like thick forested sections, you can just hit it once with a flamethrower and it'll start to completely burn down. See, in this case, I completely destroyed the trees. So that's another way that you can destroy large areas of of trees if you need to get rid of the trees, but it does create a lot of pollution. And as we know, pollution will bring biters. And it also, like I said, it doesn't always destroy the tree. Sometimes it just leaves like a burned trunk that you still have to remove. So I don't often rely on the burning method to clear a forest. Uh, grenades are, grenades do a better job of it usually, you know, unless you just have like huge forest that you can light on fire and then come back later to see if it's ready. Okay, so we'll just let that start cranking away, making flamethrower ammunition. And now we can endeavor to take out some biter bases. So let's go down and get as much ammo as we can because I'm now completely out. I'm not sure how much of the red stuff I'm going to have available. Probably not that much. Yeah, only 162. So I'm going to need, I'm going to pick up all that yellow ammo. So I'll use that for my battles. Um, I'm also going to need to craft more turrets. So let's make another couple stacks of turrets. I've got repair packs. I've got my grenades. Um, yeah, let's get, let's grab more grenades. Okay, so I'm going to keep the red ammo in my, in my personal weapon. Um, I'm also going to use the shotgun. Um, so I'll actually keep my shotgun selected so you can see how that works. All right, so I'm just going to go over here and get started. Now we can see here there's some red stuff on the map. Um, there's, a, there's a new base that has spawned there. There, now we can see it. All right, so this is pretty scary looking. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, get on my flamethrower. And look at that. They run through the flames. They catch on fire. And if they don't get killed right away, it won't take much longer before they're completely dead. All right, for the straggler, so I'll go back to my minigun. All right, and then here's where I used a shotgun. Because like I mentioned before, shotguns are good for destroying the spawners. All right. Now the hard part are these, are the worms. The worms are pretty tough. They do a lot of damage. Okay. So that one's taken care of. Now let's get in our car. And I'm going to load red ammo into the car. And I'll show you another way that you can kill biters from inside the car. Notice that we do have a gun on the car itself. So you can, you can drive around and hold your space bar and shoot stuff from inside the safety of your car, like this. And uh, later on, we'll get access to tanks, which are even more powerful. Um, and they're, and they are, how do you say, they're very tough. They have very tough defenses. Uh, in fact, with the tanks, you can drive through trees without taking any damage. Um, so tanks are, tanks are great for taking out these bases as well, right? The car will do the job, but you, you have to be careful. You can't, you can't go in too deep. You have to make sure that you don't get stuck like I am right now. Cause if you can get, if you get stuck, especially where the worms are spitting, you can, uh, you can get destroyed. Uh, the other nice thing about the tanks is you can you can actually roll over the spawners and destroy them that way. Okay, so we got those taken care of. Let's look at our pollution cloud. Over here would be a, yeah, around here would be a good place to hit uh, these bases. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go south, let's grab, let's hit this one, let's hit this one, and then we'll go to the other side of the water and clear those out. So we'll head southwest here. I'm starting to run low on the red ammo in my car, so I might not be able to keep this up for too long. Uh, but this is, you know, this is a pretty quick and easy way to do it. There we go. Let's repair. And I think I'll take I'll take some of the ammo out of my personal weapon and use it in the car. Okay, where do I need to go now? I need to go south. Uh, but I've got a lot of trees here, so I'm just gonna pick up the car and walk through or blast through will be a little bit easier. That way I don't get stuck. Okay, that's a long, that's a long way away actually. Here we go. Actually, I'm gonna put the car on my menu bar so I don't have to keep hunting for it. Here we go. See if I can go around the trees here. Okay, and you know, so like I mentioned before, what you want to do uh, as much as you can is try to stay, try to stay ahead of your pollution cloud so that you're, so that you're taking the biters out before your pollution starts to affect them, and that way you'll be you'll be relatively undisturbed. Okay, great. Clean that up. 
All right, so now I'll have to go around to the other side of the lake uh, and take those out. Um, but I think we're we're about at time for today, so I'll do that between now and the next episode. Now that you've seen how it's done, you've seen me destroy stuff with the car, you've seen me destroy stuff on foot with flamethrowers and grenades and shotguns, and you've seen me destroy stuff using the turret creep method. Um, in the late game, we have access, as I mentioned, to tanks. Um, another magnificent weapon um, are these atomic bombs. These are they're atomic rockets that you can shoot from a handheld rocket launcher. <laughs> and uh, that is by far my favorite method for doing this. Um, and, you know, to do it manually on foot. Um, but then we also will have the ability to make artillery guns, which can take out biter bases from very long distances. All right. So later in the game, if we get, if we get, uh, atomic rockets and artillery, um, we have our base walled in with laser turrets and flamethrowers. Uh, it, at that point, dealing with the biters becomes almost trivial. I mean, it's, it's like not even worth, <laughs> it's not even worth mentioning. It becomes very easy. So, uh, that's what we'll be shooting for long term. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it as always. I hope to see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.